Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. I hope you are all having a great start to your week. Today we are talking all about my new leg tattoo. I've been posting updates here and there on my new leg tattoo, but I thought I would sit down today and just tell you guys everything that's been happening because this is one of the most intense tattoos I've ever gotten, pain-wise as well as healing-wise. I also tested out three different numbing creams, so we're gonna go over the results of that today as well. If you're new here, my name is Sal EST. I'm on a journey towards becoming a tattoo artist myself, and I make tattoo-related content right here every week. So with that being said, let's get into my new leg tattoo. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. The tattoo artist I went to is Gina Serpentina. Gina, number one, is an absolute angel, and she is the tattoo artist that did both of the dagger designs on my calves last August. I have an older video on my channel where I go through my process of how I find the tattoo artists I go to. And in that video, I actually find Gina on Instagram. So that's pretty fun to look back on. That video is only a year old, but it's so crazy to see how much has changed since then. So I've wanted my knee tattooed for a while now. And in 2020, I posted this TikTok where I was deciding on my next tattoo. And the two options were the moth on my sternum that I did eventually get, as well as like a dagger rose design on my knee. I don't even think my next tattoo was either of those designs at the time, but I did know in my mind that I wanted that dagger design somewhere on my leg. So I ended up getting that moth on the sternum and I moved the dagger designs down to my calves so I could get a matching pair. So after those tattoos, I still knew that I wanted my knee tattooed and I knew I wanted it on my left knee because my right arm is like fully tattooed and I thought if I got my right leg fully tattooed that it would have just been like a lot on my right side of my body. I would have been like weighed down with the tattoos. We're all about balance here, so I decided that the left would be good. And now that I have a lot more tattoos and I feel a lot more involved in the tattoo community, I definitely get tattooed very differently now than when I started. And I'm not saying you can't get tattooed like this if you're not working at a shop or if you're not very visibly tattooed. This is just my own experience. But when I began getting tattoos, I really only valued my idea for the tattoo. So like what I wanted and where I wanted it. But now it's changed to where I really value the individual who's tattooing me as much as I value the idea I have for the tattoo that I want. It's really just a mindset change if you think about it, but I really value the person who's tattooing me. I value their art style, their time, how they feel about the tattoo. So getting tattooed now is a lot more about the experience with that other person than I really ever considered before. So going into this tattoo, I knew Gina really loves doing snakes and peonies. I know that from conversations I've had with her, as well as she creates a lot of paintings of snakes and peonies. And I actually initially thought that I would be getting a chrysanthemum over my knee instead of the peony, but I'm glad I did settle on the peony over the knee with the snake surrounding it. I think it just fits so well over the area. So my first appointment was on March 29th at 1 p.m. This was a Tuesday, which is pretty convenient because Tuesdays are my days off and usually tattoo artists aren't super booked up on Tuesdays. So Gina had a free day, I had a free day, it worked out pretty well. And it's also really nice having just a tattoo appointment that day, not having to rush anywhere before or after so I could just focus on getting tattooed. Gina and another tattoo artist, Taylor Fortuna, just opened up their private studio in Santa Monica called La Volta Tattoo. And they had only been there a few weeks by the time my first appointment came up, so it was really nice to see Gina in their new space. Gina and Taylor have created such an open, warm, welcoming space for their new studio, and it's just so nice to feel like just so comfortable getting tattooed. When I got to my appointment, Gina showed me the sketches that she had been working on and she had a sketch of my leg, where my dagger tattoo was, and then she showed me her design of the peony over the knee, one on top, and then a snake kind of wrapping around. I instantly loved her idea, so she went on to stenciling. Gina stenciled on the peonies as well as the snake head, and then she freehanded the snake on to my leg. 
If you've ever had an artist freehand anything on you, you'll know it's definitely a lengthy process, but it's definitely worth it because it really allows the artist to get such a nice flow to the design when they are drawing directly onto the body. And Gina had such a great process for freehanding where she had a variety of Sharpies from light colors to dark colors. And she started with like a yellow and just like outlining the snake and then further refine the snake until she got to like a blue marker that was kind of like the final design. So I thought that was really cool. So once Gina was finished with the drawing, we went on to tattooing and Gina decided to start with the snake first on top of my thigh and then she worked down to my calf area and then we moved on to the peonies and the leaves. To begin with, I sat on the bed with my legs bent over with my feet resting on a chair that was in front of the bed and then Gina was kind of like behind to the side of the chair so that she could tattoo my leg that way. When Gina was tattooing the snake, I was generally pretty fine, except for when the snake kind of wraps around the back of my knee. That definitely was very spicy, but it did not compare at all to the top of my knee, which was so painful. Like literally the most tattoo pain I've ever felt was right directly on top of my kneecap in the area right below my kneecap. So like, you know that area that like doctors will hit with like a little hammer? That area was also so bad. Genuinely, there was a point where I had to just sit there and put my head down and focus on breathing while Gina tattooed my kneecap. And I was like focusing on getting my soul to leave my body. And I felt really bad because there were some times where my leg was like a little shaky. It was really difficult because from time to time, Gina had me put my foot onto her leg so that she can get a better angle on the kneecap. So there was an element where I kind of had to like balance my leg on top of hers. So my leg was kind of tense and I was trying to just like hold it as still as possible. So it was just really difficult. And I did find out that sometimes your body can shake when you're getting tattooed if you haven't eaten enough prior. And I think that that definitely could have been a factor for me as well. But we ended up getting through the line work actually pretty quickly and we took a break and I had a snack which definitely really helped with the shaking. I felt way better after I had a snack. And after that first break, Gina went in to shade some of the scales and we actually got pretty far with some of the shading on the snake as well in that first session. Gina was such a star, the whole tattoo, I can't imagine how difficult it would be to tattoo the knee in general, but also considering how much I was struggling, it must have made it way more difficult. And she still came through and she pulled like the cleanest lines on the top of my kneecap, which I'm just blown away that she was able to do that. I'm honestly pretty proud of how much I sat for this first session. I genuinely think that it was just pure adrenaline that got me through all of the line work and then a lot of the shading of the snake. And I spoke about this in my brow shaving video, but some tattoos I instantly fall in love with. Some tattoos, it takes a few days to adjust to them. Nothing about the quality of the tattoo, it just really happens one way or the other when I get tattooed. And I was instantly in love with this tattoo. Really, even from when the stencil was complete on my leg, I was like, wow, I don't know how I lived prior to having this on my leg. And I have dealt with a lot of insecurities about my legs for a really long time, specifically the tops of my thighs, because I am prone to cellulite there. And it's one of those things where when I tell people this, they tell me I'm being way too hard on myself and I know that I am, but it's still something that I find difficulty with. Our insecurities are always so much more heightened in our minds than really how people perceive them, if people even perceive them. And I know it's silly, but it is something, like I said, that I do struggle with. And I don't want it to seem like I got this tattoo in order to cover up my legs, but I found that getting tattooed in areas of my body where I do have some insecurities have really helped me to learn to love those parts of my body. So that's also a huge part of this tattoo for me. So when I left the tattoo studio, Gina wrapped the tattoo in plastic, and I think it was about 5 p.m. when I eventually did go home. When I got home, I showered. I used Dr. Bronner's baby soap on the tattoo. I love this soap for new tattoos because it's very gentle. I would definitely recommend using it. But I decided not to rewrap my tattoo that first night and I just decided to do Aquaphor every morning and night. 
And I actually did end up getting ink on my sheets that first night. So definitely maybe don't do what I did. And just for the first night, rewrap your tattoos, even if it's just to save your sheets. And when I tell you guys that I was sore for this tattoo, I was so sore. Probably more sore than any other tattoo that I've gotten, even when I got work done on my sleeve. And Gina already had told me this ahead of time that this is normal. She said to keep the knee raised if possible and to ice it if the swelling gets too bad. I didn't end up icing it, but I did sleep with my knee on a pillow. I was sore for about two days after getting this tattoo and it really sucked to bend my knee. I was doing that like old lady bend if I needed to get anything off the floor. It was pretty sad, but I did end up just wearing like loose pants to work for the next few days and it did heal up really well. And so I went in for my second session on my leg last Tuesday, which as I'm recording this is a little over a week ago. And I am officially in the itchy stage of this tattoo. It itches so bad. I want to itch it right now, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to itch it. And for my second session, I also tried out three different numbing creams. I definitely thought after that first session that I could not handle Gina packing color into that area because if I did without numbing creams, I feel like I would have passed on. This channel would not exist because I would be dead. So different numbing creams affect your skin in different ways based on the numbing agent. And the brand of numbing creams that I went with is TKTX. One of the tattoo artists at the shop I work at actually recommended this brand of numbing cream because she said it alters your skin the least and it interferes the least as well with healing. Okay, so the three different numbing creams that I chose were... This first one is the original numbing cream and it's called the Best TKTX Numbing Cream. This one is definitely their most popular one, so I had to get it. This one comes in a green container and the color of the cream is like a light pink when it first came out, but it dried down pretty clear. Olive was hanging around for this first application, so I had to kick her out for the next two. Next, I went with the Mithra Plus numbing cream, and I got this one because it says it has 10% lidocaine in it, which is an insane amount of lidocaine. And this one was recommended if you have sensitive skin, so that is also why I decided to try this one out. The color is kind of like a dark pink, and it stays like a dark pink. And then the next one I got is this J Pro numbing cream. This one seemed like it was the most different from all the other ones on the website, so I decided to go with this one. And I believe this one is also one of the cheapest options. And the J Pro went on as like a light pink, and it stayed light pink when it dried as well. So I decided to do three vertical lines because I felt like that was how we were going to get the most fair results from this test. And then I wrapped it in plastic wrap. And I did this about an hour before my tattoo session. The TKTX website generally does not recommend having the cream on for more than 70 minutes. So I wanted to make sure that I got just an hour with all of these creams on my leg before we started tattooing. When I got to Gina's studio, I could already feel that my leg was pretty numb. It's a pretty weird sensation when you go to touch your leg and it kind of like doesn't feel like you're touching your leg. You can feel like pressure, but you can't really feel like the touch. And before we even started tattooing, I already was having problems with the J Pro numbing cream. This one was irritating my skin and it was stinging quite a bit before we started tattooing and when she started tattooing, it was stinging pretty bad. So I don't know if it's something specifically with my skin, but the J Pro numbing cream was probably my least favorite just because it was stinging quite a bit. And then for the TKTX Best Numbing Cream, with that one, I felt like it made my skin a lot more red and a lot more puffy than the other two, also even before we started tattooing. Aside from those issues though, when we actually got into tattooing, all three of these numbing creams did a great job at numbing my skin. And for about two and a half hours, I was almost totally numb while I was being tattooed. So I would say in terms of numbing, there isn't much of a difference between these three creams. It's just as much as they irritated my skin. So definitely for me, my favorite was the Mithra Plus numbing cream that comes in this little black container. I would definitely recommend this one as it did not irritate my skin at all. And the numbing effect was just the same as the other two creams. This could be because my skin is sensitive. I do know that I have sensitive skin. Maybe the other ones won't bother you as much, but just in my opinion, I think the Mithra Plus is the best one. 
The only downside with using numbing creams is that when the pain does start to come, it kind of all comes at once and it can be a little bit overwhelming. So like I said, about two and a half hours is the amount of numbing that I did experience. And then once we got to that two and a half hour mark, all the pain just started to like come to the surface, including the areas that had already been tattooed were starting to be really sore and the areas that she was tattooing was just so painful. So that last 30 minutes of our appointment was really, really difficult for me to get through just because it was like a combination of all the pain coming at once. So luckily at that three hour mark, Gina was done with the snake completely and the leaves. So all we have to do left is the top of the knee and the peony right on top of that peony. So we decided we were going to do that for a later session because at this point I was already maxed out with pain and I knew I couldn't go to the most painful spot right on top of my kneecap after everything. So we booked another appointment for the end of May. It is a little farther out because I have family visiting and Gina also has a lot of appointments in May. So this will be completed at the end of May and I'm definitely buying more of the Mithra Plus numbing cream to numb the top of my knee so that I don't pass away. But I'm so happy with where the tattoo is now. I love that Gina decided to go with this gold color for the snake belly. It matches some of the gold in the dagger that I have, as well as some of the leaf colors are also the same on the rose leaves down on my calf as well. So everything's kind of in the same color palette and I'm just obsessed with this tattoo. I can't wait until we get this thing fully finished and I am absolutely in love with this tattoo. So that is currently where we are at with my leg. I will update you guys on all of my social channels when I do finish this at the end of May, and I'll make sure to post on the community tab as well. So if you're just following me on YouTube, no worries, you will see the finished tattoo as well. So that is all I have for you guys today on the story of my new leg tattoo. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know what tattoos you guys are currently getting, if you are getting any, or any that you have planned. I would love to hear from you guys down below, but if you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If you have, leave me this emoji in the comments so that I know that you are a real one. Bye everyone.